Hello everyone, and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's video, we are going to be having a look at the entire history of shuttle-derived launch vehicles. If you don't know what those are, those are basically rockets that used space shuttle parts to basically create new rockets. So, it's pretty cool. We're going to be going over old ones, new ones, reusable ones, all the way from the 80s to basically present time. So, let's get straight into the first rocket, which is the Shuttle C. It is the most similar to the shuttle, and if you uh, notice in the thumbnail, it is actually orange in the thumbnail. And what, why is it white? Now, now there is a there is a good reason for that, my friend. So um, here is the orange one I built, and as you can see, there is there is there are slight issues with it. So <laughs> um, basically, what would happen is it would basically get up to like three kilometers, and then just you know, out of luck, basically. So the, the reason for that is because I'm using a five meter external tank because a three point seven five meter one looks a little dumb, too small, basically. So because um, that's when you can actually color orange using the the you know, in default Kerbal Space program. But uh, what I ended up, what I had to do is I had to put a bunch of flags around the outside to make it look orange. And flags are very kind of strange aerodynamically, so they'd make a bunch of drag on that top and and just flip us over. Um, so basically, it's white. I kind of had it. I had to bite the bullet and make it a little ugly, but whatever. Point is, this is the Shuttle C. Um, this is the the earliest um, space shuttle derived vehicle that we're gonna look at. Obviously, that they're therefore making it the most similar to the space shuttle. So this was explored in various different ways between the 19, about 1984 and like 1995. Um, so basically the idea was, hey, what if the space shuttle, just without all the big fat wings and all the tail fins and all the, all the heavy bits that no one likes. Um, it's basically, Matt Lown did a video on this thing and uh, he did a recreation of, I believe one of the missions that was proposed, which was basically to do two launches and be able to send stuff to the moon and, and stuff like that and do a moon landing. Um, there's also some Mars proposals, but uh, this thing could, uh, depending on who you ask, it could do a ballpark of like 80, 90, 95 tons to low Earth orbit. Um, the recreation I'm going to be doing um, is going to be um, a possible, uh, the crew launch, as you can see, because there's a launch escape tower on the top. Basically, what you do is you deploy that fairing, and then you open up that cargo bay, and then what you do is you can release this big, giant mechanism, which can then make its way out to uh, wherever, wherever it wants to go. Um, this is a loose recreation of the moon one, like this this uh, this spacecraft. Um, it's, I think this is this is the coolest mission. Hayes Grayart, uh, if you don't know who he is, he's really cool. Channel has a bunch of 3D uh, models and stuff for launch, 3D renders for and like whatever for animations. I guess is the word I'm looking for for launches. Um, and he did one of this thing too. Really, really cool rocket, the shuttle C. Um, and uh, if you did notice, when we cut our main engines, we were actually just slightly short of orbit. Um, the reason for that being, um, we actually want the uh, the engines to be, I guess, on a suborbital trajectory. Because what we do actually, after separating our payload, um, as you can see right now, is we're actually going to separate our, our engines. Our main engines are going to be detached from our rocket. And since there's no fuel left in them, because they're detached from the fuel tank, we kind of need to be on suborbital. And also, it's a, you know, maybe 100-ish meters a second easier on that good old heat shield as we come in for our landing. Because yes! This is partially reusable because the uh, the engineer said we don't like that all the fat like the wings and the you know the cockpit and all that stuff it's very 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 heavy and uh, but we still want to recover the RS25s because they're really complicated so basically they, they just attach this little engine bay and then they're gonna uh, the plan was to parachute it down so I am I am doing the same so here's our drogue chute and then here's our three main parachutes coming out and actually. Jettison the heat shield because this thing the engines are pretty heavy so even with three uh, parachutes It's gonna be coming down a little little bit fast That'd be a little bit hard a little bit uncomfortable if you were in that but ooh But uh, nothing broke so that's good and uh, now we can get ready to move on to the next shuttle derived launch vehicle the Ares one a lot of people really like this rocket I like it too. It is very very cool It actually has the unique distinction of being the only rocket on this list that as of recording has, has launched. There is another one on the list that may be launching soon. I wonder what I'm talking about there. But uh, yeah, anyway, this is the this is the Ares 1. And while we're just getting ready to do the uh, first bit of the uh, launch, we'd like to say, if you're enjoying the video, subscribe. Oh my gosh, guys, I want to hit 14.5K at the end of the week. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to set a goal, 500 subs a week. It's going to happen or not, and I'll be a meme and fail. But anyway, um, yeah, thanks to everyone who does that or joins our Discord or uh, Patreon members, merch. Yes, awesome, epic, yeah. Um, so the Ares 1. Uh, if you don't know, it's part of the Constellation program, which was basically NASA's this is the precursor to Artemis. 
Um, it was active from about 2005 to around 2010, and basically NASA was like, "All right, guys, we're 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 gonna be retiring the space shuttle soon. We got it. We got to get it. We got to get a replacement." So that you know, enter Constellation. So Ares One was the smaller of the two rockets for Constellation. It was mainly it, its role was to basically replace the space shuttle's capabilities to uh, basically service the ISS and crew up there, and it was also going to be part of moon missions. Um, Two-stage design, it has an upper stage, which is liquid fuel, you know, the whole shebang, and then a bottom stage, which is the uh, basically an SRV from the space shuttle. So, you know, reusable, right? Not reusable, but reusing bits, you know, not literally, but like reusing designs, I guess would be the right, the word I'm looking for. And then it'd have an Orion on the top and it'd be a little launch crew and all the, all the cool stuff. Uh, here, 25-ish tons to low Earth orbit, which is actually actually pretty good. But uh, now we have enter its older brother, the Ares Five. Yes, the um, we move on to it. This is a chunky guy, a very chunky guy. Not the chunkiest guy in this video, but a very a very chunky one nonetheless. Um, so the Ares Five is basically the upgraded Ares One, um, which is very similar to the space shuttle and the SLS. It is the basically the, the early, early one of the earlier versions of SLS. You'll see how you know. Um, so basically the idea was, hey guys, so what if instead of putting the like the crew or the payload next to the orange tank, you put it on top of the orange tank, like you know, most rockets say, so, you know, orange tank and then the SRBs are in the same place and uh, there they go getting jettisoned. There's a more there's extra engines on the bottom there. And um, basically there we go, getting get our way into orbit. So this the Ares 5 itself is really only that core stage and then the boosters. That's basically upper stage. That was part of the, I think that was called the Earth departure stage or something. And it basically, if you don't know the way Constellation worked, um, the way, what you do is you'd launch the Ares 5, and that's the Altair lander I have, and then basically what you do is you would get it into orbit, and then you'd launch an Ares 1 and dock a um, Orion to the Altair, and then you'd use that Earth departure stage to get from low Earth orbit all the way to the moon. Um, I guess I am using the, um, the this, this this upper stage to get it over a little bit just just because it just is, it's basically just to circularize. Um, really cool rocket. This thing 188 tons if it were to be made to get into orbit because it is literally pushing that giant liquid fuel stage into orbit, which is crazy. Bigger than the Saturn V, it'd be way bigger than the Saturn V, like 40-ish extra tons to low Earth orbit. It is crazy. It would have been cool to see this thing fly, but uh, it was it was it was. Very, very big. Speaking of big, right, you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, what do we have here? The Jupiter 3. This may be one of my favorite, if not my favorite, um, favorite rocket failed concept. This thing is hilarious. I love it. And oh my, is it very, very slow. So this thing is basically a shuttle-derived launch vehicle meets a Saturn V-derived launch vehicle and just kind of just put them together. Just smash all the parts together, put its engines, SRBs, fuel tanks everywhere. This is what you get. Now, the Jupiter 3 was a very interesting concept. So basically the people were like, all right guys, this was during the Constellation program. So like, all right, this is, this is getting expensive. This is gonna be really expensive and those politicians are not, not, looking, not looking good here. So what if we propose the alternative, the Jupiter rockets? And this was the most insane of their proposals was the, the Jupiter 3. So the way it works it is basically have two shuttle orange tank and SRV kind of stacks sitting as boosters, and then it would have our um, F1s? Actually, no, I'm actually not sure what they were. I don't think it was F1s. It was something similar to a, it was it was, it was based on the, the Saturn V design, essentially, is what I'm trying to say, um, as, the, as the core. So it has this, um, this first stage, which is mainly just fed by these orange tanks, and then it has um, a, a second stage and the third stage, I guess, for third, depending on how you count the stages. So. To demonstrate the, the insanity of this thing, yeah, I, I decided to launch an entire Soyuz with it. Because why not? Because it can. It could launch anything. Um, I did a dedicated video about this, and I launched like this giant space station to EVE. It's really cool. Really cool video. Um, one of my first videos, I actually get a lot of views. So thanks to everyone who's watched that video. I uh, probably sounded really dumb back then. I don't know. It's almost a year ago. Wow, jeez. Time flies, right? <laughs> so, uh... Oh, there's not much known about this thing. Um, there's no like payload capacity. I assume it would be probably in the 200 ton, 250 ton probably region. Insane. Like this is kind of similar to like 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 Sea Dragon level concept. It's crazy big, crazy crazy big, uh, and crazy slow. 
It was actually hard. The first time I, I tried to do this flight to record it, I, I did not, I pitched over too much and fell out of the sky. Um, so, uh, yeah, because if, if, yeah, if you're not going steep enough, those, this, that first stage does not have that much power after the SRBs fall off. And if you do not have your Apple Apps high enough, you are going to hit that Apple Apps, and then you're just going to start descending back into the atmosphere. So, and same thing with the second stage. So, but uh, eventually, I got her into space, and then I'm going to get ready to circularize, and then we will get ready to look at the last of our rockets on today's list. Obviously, this is not a complete list. There are a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of shuttle-derived vehicles, but I'm just choosing the main, most notable ones because there's there's probably hundreds of crazy telescope designs or wacky stuff, small things, big things, crazy things. But SLS. These are the ones that these are the ones that were taken the most seriously. And there's a lot of ones that are very similar to this. Like the Shuttle C had a lot like the also like the HLD, which is basically a Shuttle C, but you know. And the Jupiter, there's a bunch of different Jupiters, but I just chose the, the cool one. So SLS. SLS is gonna be the last one. The newest one, the SLS is basically like a, a, a downgraded Ares 5 because, um, well, they wanted to be a little bit cheaper. Ha 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 ha, you know? Oh my, yeah, ha ha ha, cheaper. It's been, this has been a thing, these shuttle derived things for like 30 years, 30, 40 years. And we have managed to spend $20 billion on them and at a minimum, it's probably closer to 30. And we have seen exactly zero of them fly. Although that hopefully will finally change, hopefully. Hopefully, 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 because, oh my, these are a lot of designs, a lot of work, um, and not a lot of things in the air. Like, ugh. like the Ares one did technically launch, but that was actually only the SRB that launched it at a dummy upper stage. That was back in 2009. And then there was like, and then when they launched it, they're like, oh crap, guys, this thing doesn't, wouldn't even be feasible for crew. So, <laughs> yeah, the good times. Cool rocket, though, cool rocket. Um, but that's going to be our SLS on its way into orbit, and that is going to complete today's overview of shuttle derived launch vehicles here is all the members thank you to all the members here is all the patrons thank you to all the patrons um uh, and thank you to you guys for watching the video yeah um so i'm gonna be signing off now i'd like to thank you for watching we'll see you next time please for to come to this video once again thank you for watching we'll see you next time and bye